Great, great, thank you. It's great to be here. It's always very exciting uh, the, with these sessions. Um, I wanted to, to, to open by at least give you an idea of a, a little roadmap of what we'll be talking about uh, for the day. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about artificial intelligence today, uh, the, the, the current uses in project management and related fields, and then I want to touch into the future of uh, artificial intelligence and project management. So those are uh, kind of, in a nutshell, the, the areas that we'll be touching on. Um, I want to start out by talking about uh, artificial intelligence uh, as a huge tool in project management. Right now, it has some limited applications. More companies are moving towards it. It has some great uses, but I would encourage all of you uh, to really uh, seek out more information about this field. Um, I was reading a couple articles just saying as early as 2024, artificial intelligence is going to become a, a huge uh, relevant, uh, relevant force within the project management community. So. Um, Getting more knowledge on this area is certainly something everyone should strive for, and uh, one can expect to see more in this field. But to start, um, really artificial intelligence is uh, something that uh, is based on machine learning, where uh, basically large data is being crunched together and uh, connections and relationships are being found. It's also being able to, to drive things uh, like virtual assistants, uh, such as Siri, Alexa, and, and Google, all of these have an artificial intelligence back uh, and which then can uh, help uh, with uh, information. Uh, another piece that kind of goes with it is kind of self-driving equipment, um, another application of artificial intelligence as uh, the program is learning to drive and, and to maneuver within the, the highways uh, of the world. Um, I also see a, a huge area of decision-making assistance happening with artificial intelligence. Um, I've also been reading a lot on uh, chatbots. It seems that there's a number of chatbots uh, that are available commercially for use, and I was already thinking, like, well, you know, wouldn't it be great to have an interactive chatbot that could be utilized um, to update uh, stakeholders on a project because you can put all the data in there, and then they can interact and ask those questions rather than have to speak to the, a project team member or the project manager. So uh, that's just kind of like the, the, the start. Um, current applications right now um, are in the areas of decision-making, risk management, scheduling, and planning. Um, decision-making is because uh, with all this large data that's being crunched, there's so much opportunity to, to learn. As we all know, at the beginning of any project, you should be going through your reference library or your company's reference library of related projects. But imagine if that was all going to be put into a huge database with artificial intelligence filters to be able to to find connections and to be able to make better decisions. Um, we already see it, uh, the same thing, large data being, uh, uh, you know, utilized for risk management. Uh, scheduling and planning, we already see there, there's a number of scheduling tools out there that are, that are being powered by uh, artificial intelligence. If you aren't already using one, I, I would recommend looking into it. I know that there are some costs associated with it, but uh, the sooner you're able to, to do and use those tools, the better off you are. Um, and then uh, my understanding is it'll be integrating with other uh, scheduling tools and other communication tools uh, such as Slack. I understand that they are working towards uh, additional project, excuse me, artificial intelligence uh, support. Um, and one of the concepts that, that I believe is going to be happening in the future is that there's going to be uh, basically a potential for a project manager that's going to be based in artificial intelligence. So one needs to keep an eye on that for the future. Um, again, as I mentioned before, um, these kind of programmable uh, AI chatbots are also uh, are very interesting and, and have a lot of potential. Um, I kind of want to give an example in a related field uh, to kind of show some of the power of artificial intelligence that's already happening. Um, there have been some organizations that have been uh, working towards uh, putting in medical data and then having artificial intelligence go through it and then scan for associations and relationships. And uh, that application is already uh, showing to be quite effective because uh, when the large data gets crunched, it's, they're finding new relationships um, that they might not have noticed that, that even the researchers weren't looking for. So essentially, artificial intelligence, since it can look at all the data and look at, at relationships um, over a period of time and over over lots of different patients, it's much more effective than maybe a team of, of 
researchers that might just be able to, to focus in a very small number of, of cases or, or study or understand and, and see limited relationships. So um, I see that in the field of uh, medicine, there's going to be a lot of improvements uh, based on AI. So I would say watch for that as well. Uh, again, supporting uh, decisions, again, large data, anytime you can get large data from your company and, and put it all together and have it kind of scanned and sorted and reviewed by artificial intelligence, it can, it can come up with better, better decisions, better information, see those, uh, those more of those interrelated uh, relationships. Um, think of it as like uh, when you go to Amazon, Amazon's already using it in their shopping recommendations. They already have a database on what your shopping preferences, what you've purchased in the past, what you've looked at, what you've touched, and then that information is then processed uh, on the back end, and then it is giving you recommendations. The same thing is happening with ads that will be popping up and, and coming to you. Uh, they will be based upon your past recommendations past uh, items that you've reviewed, purchased, um, all this data is being uh, correlated in they're making related decisions. What they're doing is they're taking a look at the, the data from other related individuals of their shopping patterns. And if a person bought A, they also bought B, they're going to recommend this to you. Um, so it's really uh, the same thing I see happening in, in, in project management where you Artificial intelligence can offer suggestions on closely related decisions or, or other situations. Another thing I see is that artificial intelligence should be part of your brainstorming sessions as you're taking a look at uh, different ideas uh, on how to handle a project or, or solutions. Um, if you could tap into that database to see anything that's related, I, I see that this is being related back to predictive analysis. And the same thing is being applied because there's such a large amount of data that could be reviewed they can better predict and, and offer uh, recommendations and offer feedback. So all this is, is happening. I, I see it's happening much more on a limited scale, but it will be getting uh, much more intense and, and much more um, available um, as time goes on. The other thing that goes with this is uh, costs. Um, I also see it as identifying risks and uh, It'll help identify risk because it'll be able to take all that data on, on risk to, to help identify, treat them, and then to, to, to support uh, some risk. Um, you already see this happening in the insurance industry. They're taking large amounts of data, running through and, and examining patterns and understanding um, exactly, well, you know, who is a higher risk and basing it to different associated factors, such as your zip code, such as your driving habits, such as uh, your, your, the amount of commute that you have uh, for every day. All these factors associate back to the level of risk, and this is being used by the insurance company, but I see uh, the same thing kind of moving into, uh, again, into uh, risk management and project management. Again, insurance rates are being, uh, being driven by these relationships that they find. These Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over a thousand hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.